A question I often get asked is why would someone like me with a background in academia who'd become quite well established and recognized internationally as a researcher and research coordinator will join forces with an organization like Zenzino? There's quite a simple answer to that, but it's going to take me a few moments to explain that, that simple answer. Back in 2020, I was working as a research coordinator for two global health strategies. And the problem that we were really starting to face and tackle was the fact that the Office of Global Burden had published data which had been shared by the World Health Organization that estimated a 6.3 billion people on planet Earth were living with an omega-3 deficiency. And that's quite profound. Whenever there's a deficiency of any essential nutrients, it typically leads to poor health outcomes. But something like omega-3, which is so intertwined in our cellular function, really means that there is a problem at a fundamental level. And so we had to consider this. Our body can't produce sufficient amount of these essential nutrients, and typically we would derive them from the diet. But that's where the problems come in. And the problem has three classic phases. The first one is that people just don't consume those types of foods enough and certainly not frequently enough anymore. Fatty fish, things like mackerel and bluefin tuna and salmon, all these really good sources of omega-3s. Well, as the years go by, people consume less and less as our taste buds have been altered and changed due to the industrialization of food. Secondly, we face a real sustainability and ethical issue. We simply can't pull enough fish out of the sea and maintain any kind of climatological moral basis. It's unsustainable. It's impractical. The reality is, regardless of what the guidelines might infer, is that most people would have to eat good sources of fatty fish most days of the week. And then we get to the third problem, which is cost. And as we know, cost is king. The reality is, is to get the type of fish that would be sufficiently packed with those nutrients means we have to get wild line caught samples of those fish. We can't do that for 8 billion people living on planet Earth. We can't do that for the 6.3 billion people we know who are deficient. And we can't do it for the sake of the environment. And then imagine again the cost. So we had to look at other solutions, and we did. As a part of the research strategy team I was in, we started to consider, well, what else can we do? And we looked at supplementation, but the reality is, is that the evidence, the research evidence around supplementation, well, it was quite damning. We knew there was a systematic review published in 2018 that quantified the area. The outcome of that, the statement, the findings were that most of these supplements, well, they failed to function. That they led to negligible or poor outcomes. They didn't change the omega-3 status in a way that we could quantify. So there we were scratching our heads. How do we fix a global health problem? How do we put back in something that is essential, that needs to be there in order to optimize health? And then, curiously, as these things come about, a good friend of mine called me out of the blue and said, have you ever heard of this Scandinavian company called Zinzino? Now, he was making a personal inquiry. He'd had some health issues over the years, and his doctor over in the United States had recommended this specific company with their specific product and had told him, this is the one that works. And I was skeptical. Myself and, and our team had been looking at this for some time, and to me it was, yeah, 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 here's another one. But he asked me to take a look, and so I did. I thought, I'll take a look. It takes no time. Let's see what's going on in this space. Why would it be any different? And the moment I did, I saw two profound aspects that were really game-changing. And I recognized it immediately. First of all, the test. The first thing that I saw was that this was a test-based company. And not only that, because anyone can jump on the snake oil trail and start to tell you things are a problem, tell you things are wrong when in fact they're not. That's easily done. But this was actually a company that had aligned with one of the most reputable, distinguished, independent laboratories in the world. And they were the people who were doing the dry blood spot samples for them. This piqued my interest. In science, you know, let's get real. If we can't measure it, to a certain extent, we don't even accept that it's a reality. And we like to test and test and test again to see how something stacks up against repeated scrutiny. And here we had one of the most recognized laboratories in the world doing this type of blood analysis. And then I looked at the product. 
and had that moment of not eureka, but certainly I recognized immediately the, the simplicity of the genius. You see, where omega-3s occur in nature, they are naturally bound to a polyphenol. Polyphenols are another essential aspect, powerful antioxidants of our nutritional health. They, they function on so many levels within the human biology, within the human organism. And where we find omega-3 in nature, they are bound to these polyphenols, but the essential refining process of, of fish oil in order, in order to eliminate those environmental toxins also separates it from the polyphenol. And so the minute I loaded up the information, looked at the page, and I saw the simplicity of the genius of what Zinzino had done, they'd realigned nature. They'd put the omega-3 back with the polyphenol. And there it was. So immediately... I realized that this was something decidedly different. In sport, we, we talk a lot about when the opposition goes zig, you should go zag. And what that means is you should always take the opposite direction. If you're going to have an impact on the game, on the sport, on the outcome, if they go zig, you go zag. And really, the whole fish industry, the whole supplement industry had gone zig. Everybody had gone down the same path. Everybody was trying to increase total amounts in an endeavor to increase those circulating amounts of omega-3. But it hadn't worked. It wasn't working. We know why that doesn't work. And for the individual who attempts it, typically what it leads to is gastric issues, discomfort, complaints, and they disengage with little to no meaningful outcome with regards to their health. Zinzino had gone zag. They'd played into the open space. They'd seen the opportunity to do things differently. But more importantly, they understood what difference needed to be made. And by applying that simple genius of rebinding the omega-3 to the polyphenol, you now had a fully functional supplement that could meaningfully bring about a change, an alteration, an improvement to your omega-3 status. So from that point, I was hooked because our role as science is to enable our societies to live better, to empower better health. It's, it's upon us to share our insights and our information, the findings of our research, so that people can live better. But the frustration I'd always lived with was the fact that it took so long for our message to go from the peer-reviewed literature all the way through to making a change in the real world. And here I saw an organization who were just getting directly involved and in facilitating that change. I always remember an old professor of mine saying, the reason why we do experiments with 10, 20, or 100 people is because we can't measure the entire world. And then Zinzino took a different route and just decided to go and measure the entire world and then tell them how to do things differently. And so for me, here was an opportunity to plug straight in and start to bring about manifest positive change to health outcomes. Zinzino had the leverage on the world. They had the eyes and ears of the world. They were right at the front of test-based nutrition. We're right at the front today. We know that because we're foraging and we're forming new paths. We're so far ahead now that our ideas and our developments are mapped out for the next five to 10 years. We know what we do well now. We have the highest possible standards and it's upon us to maintain those standards in everything we do as we go forward. That's the exciting part, to build on excellence. We're already changing health on a global scale, one cell at a time, one human at a time, one test at a time. And as we move forward, we intend to do even more. But the key thing is to bring things right back to center every single time and consider, well, what's at the very heart of what matters? The fact is, is that there's never been more faith and trust in what science has to share, but there's never been such little trust in how science is communicated. There is so much misinformation. Some of that is willful. Some of that is by accident. Some of that is due to the whole nature of an industry that just needs to renew headlines on magazines and newspapers. It's upon us to have direct conversations with the world, to empower them to take a test, to measure something of importance, of relevance, of meaning, and then to be able to powerfully do something about it. Because when we do this, 
We are enhancing lives. We are changing lives. We are enriching lives. We are empowering people to live better every single day. And that in itself is a catalyst. That in itself is a global movement. And so for us at Denzino, as we look forward from the front, we see a future whereby we can measure more things meaningfully, measure them better, so that we can empower all of you to not only live better and do better, but share a better message, live a better way, have more, do more, be more, and take that message forward into your communities and bring about a change that's manifest on a global scale.